Today I'm joined by Eric Aylin, co-founder of Billy Spine, and Olga Nost, VP Broadcast Solutions at Avato Systems. Welcome both. Hello there, thanks. Okay, so you've recently announced that you will combine your product portfolios of media entertainment related Avato Systems and Billy Spine business presenting them under a relaunch Vidi Spine brand. Can you tell us a little bit about the rationale behind this? Yes, um, I think I can take this question, Eric. Um, when we acquired Vidi Spine in 2017, um, we had a, together with Vidi Spine portfolio and broadcast solutions portfolio, we had two complementary portfolios. Uh, we only had a small overlap and um, there was a clear line between these portfolios. Both portfolios have grown over the last years and we worked jointly together on new technologies and applications. And this, li this line was coming a little bit blurry, so it was not so clear defined. Uh, for example, um, there were some award-winning work on AI technology and we saw that we have to change something. So our approach there was to build um, a joint combined portfolio and um, to do this, uh, we had to change our positioning and uh, we had also to go with, a, yeah, with this new portfolio with a new message to the market. Um, so we have now one brand and this brand is VD Spine. Um, yeah, and why did we choose VD Spine? Um, first of all, the name is great. It's, uh, it's, it's a brand in our target market and it describes perfectly the role we, that we are playing. We are the back end of the video ecosystem. So, and this is VD Spine, the name. At the same time, uh, as a global powerhouse, IT powerhouse, uh, and award-winning employer, the Avato Systems Group is also a strong brand. And if you look at our new logo, then you see that it's VDSpine as a logo, as an Avato System brand. And so both are combined together. Can you talk us through the offering in this new restructured portfolio? Yes, I okay. So, so in order to explain the new structure, we need to reveal a little bit, tiny bit of our plans for the future here. So this is the, the, the breaking news. Um, so when we, uh, with the Spanner of Auto System came together in 2017, uh, as well as wanting to continue building class leading media management and media supply chain solutions and so on, etc., we always had a vision. The vision was to create like a framework for a content ecosystem uh, that through collaboration with customers and vendors and integrators, consultants, infrastructure providers, cloud providers, well, the industry as a whole, would extend beyond the existing portfolio. So with that, we wanted to create a hub for knowledge, licensing, but also importantly, very much a community that really benefits everyone involved and means that we can make onboard and scale technology solutions far quicker than we, than we can take. Of course, you know, such an ecosystem just doesn't show up out of nothing. Um, so we had to start somewhere. With that, in mind, we, with that in mind, we then looked at how a restructured portfolio and a restructuring our portfolio, a first consideration was how we build different media solutions, not just what we've done in the past. So from that, we categorized all the products into a portfolio into three groups, applications, services, and platforms, uh, which then reflects the building blocks for those solutions. And that's where we are right now. Having categorized the portfolio into these building blocks, we then looked into how to apply different solutions. Uh, some products were clearly applicable for across multiple industries. Uh, some others were very specifically targeted for what we do today, like ad industry or, or media industry or and so on. And then we reflected that in the new product naming structure, the difference between targeted and kind of cross industry applications and services. You're still with me now, bear with me. The, the, the biggest difference here for people will note going forward is a, a really solution first approach. So we look at first the solution and then what the portfolio is built up from, which means that we can pick and choose from either the cross industry or the specific industry to build like a best of breed. Um, and then we show how our technology and also then third party, the, the ecosystem thinking were appropriate and we pull together what makes the first real benefit and ROI for, for end users. So again, almost like tilting the product thinking upside down and reflecting that in the building blocks for them. So according to the research IBM have carried out on the current crisis, some media companies have drastically shifted their risk preferences regarding moving to cloud-based operations. 
is this consistent with your recent experiences? Yes. <laughs> 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 to give you a little bit more background, yes, this is a trend we are seeing and tracking in our user group uh, meetings, for example, the last years. And as I said in the beginning, of course, uh, we are seeing now that it's a much faster going, um, uh, there's a much, much faster move to the cloud in the last six months. Um, of course, remote work and all these things are pushing this really hard. I think in general, we are seeing that the customers are demanding um, a much faster ROI also. And uh, with this in mind, uh, the investments in, in cloud, you can have this faster. Um, um, with a cloud technology. We have lower startup costs uh, and you directly see um, an impact uh, on, on your invests. At the same time, we are also seeing that also not only cloud, also solutions offering this um, faster return on invest, uh, there's also a higher uh, request for this. Yeah, but uh, yes, coming back to the beginning, yes, there is a, a faster movement to the cloud at the moment. Okay, so in the next few years, which area of the cloud market do you see is growing the most as a result of the recent market trends? Yes, if I, if I take this one, it sounds kind of obvious when you say it out loud, but most technology trends um, outside the arts, and if you look at business, uh, tend to be led by either things that save money, make money, and or decrease risk. That's what it's about. That's why you do software and solutions. So if, if we then look specifically at the content supply chain, one thing that we and our partners and customers spend a lot of time and resource on is deploying new systems or components, often with the risk that we then can't be sure how they're going to work in production until projects are complete. We've all been in, in these projects. What we're seeing uh, as a big trend is then a uh, growing trend towards the uh, trend is quick starts and pre-integrated templates that en enable us to go from something with a so something like an idea to a minimal viable solution very, very fast, and cloud makes this doable. So much, much quicker turnarounds, quicker, uh, quick, quicker finding out if there is a gain, or if we decrease risk. So that's where we're investing a lot of R&D and other resources in, in building out this ecosystem, which I mentioned before, with pre-integrated applications and services, not just from our own portfolio, but also extending out to others. So you can pick and choose the best of breed of whatever application solutions out there, of course, hopefully with us as, as the backend. And in the midterm, that's going to have a very big and positive impact on how technology is adapted, and especially in this ever-changing, fast-changing uh, world. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the major effects of the pandemic has been the immense pressure on advertising revenues. Can you tell us how advertising technology solutions have adapted to this solution, this situation? Yeah, uh, as I mentioned earlier, one thing we've seen is the return on invest um, that it has to become faster. And um, as advertising revenue decreases or decreased during the pandemic, um, I think this is even more true uh, for the ad tech area than perhaps for the media supply chain. Um, since there are so many options to monetize commercial inventory uh, across many platforms, different and highly uh, creative sales models uh, has to coexist and ideally aligned. Um, so this goes along with the strong need to improve the efficiency and the productivity. Any solution has to demonstrate that this um, show is return on invest either by increasing net revenues or saving costs, or even better if, if they do both. Um, from a technology perspective, tools that are optimizing processes, automating workflows, and provide self-learning capabilities uh, will be the tools in the future and the technology. What can we expect next from you guys? These technologies. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I think it, it, it ties yeah. into uh, building out the portfolio and the ecosystem a lot. So yeah. as, I, as I mentioned before, making it much, much easier to deploy things. We already today do a lot of small proof of concepts, uh, some very cool stuff. Uh, we're doing, for example, things with IBC, which we are showcasing today around a VFX archive, which I think is a, one of the kind of things that I want to do more of. Quick ones that we know is a, is a, is a, is a, is a um, uh, challenge for, for a specific set of customers, in this case, the studios who, who deal with VFX um, entities. 
and then quickly pull together with smart, fast moving vendors from the industry, something that they can use. Uh, these kinds of engagement we'll see more of, and then we'll expand the ecosystem to include more and more of applications and partners and, and system integrations and so on to really make a difference for us, for, for, for the industry as a whole. 